The king himself, Nobu Uematsu, recently went to talk to VGC and said this. He thinks movie soundtrack like music and games is uninteresting and that game music cannot develop further if composers don't try something different. Continuing the article, it says Uematsu said he thinks people need to have more freedom when creating game music, otherwise game music cannot develop further. Game music will become more interesting if composers consider what is something only I can do and use their own knowledge and experience to truly be creative, to be truly creative. And it really brings up an interesting discussion on a few things. Movie soundtrack like music and games is uninteresting. That's an interesting concept, isn't it? How many times can I say interesting in one second? If we look at the landscape of music in movies and certainly music and games these days, there is an over-reliance on telling an audience member how to feel based on emotional cues written into and baked into the music. The music is more about showcasing a feeling and an ambiance rather than necessarily creating melody and earworms that then linger in the person's mind and they connect a specific scene to a specific piece of music. And I don't necessarily think that it's a negative thing because I think it's important for music to showcase emotion and help people understand how they feel and how they should feel. It's something that we've been talking about now for centuries, essentially how music essentially is there to give us a sensation of understanding of how we should feel. It goes back to the opera days as well. I mean, you know, music written in operas was written with the intention of making the audience feel something and it was the role of the opera singers and the orchestra to ensure that that story was delivered with the music present. But I think it really highlights the importance of melody. And I think really the point that Uematsu is trying to say, not that I want to uh, suppose too much, but the importance of melody cannot be understated. I uh, posted an example on Twitter where essentially Giuseppe Verdi, when he was writing La Donna Immobile, from Rigoletto. He knew it would be successful. By this point, Verdi had been very successful in his other operas. And so when he featured La Donna Immobile, La Donna Immobile, qual più mal vento, he did everything in his power to ensure that that piece would not leak or spoil or be released before the opera because he knew that it would be an absolute win, a banger, and that people would end up, end up humming it as they left the theater. And that is exactly what happened in La Donna Mobile to this day some probably what 200 years later I forget the dates 18 something is still one of the most most recognizable opera arias in existence and even even let's let's even go beyond opera arias melody is vital there's an interesting thing that happens between melody and ambient music to me and what I've sort of gathered is that ambient music exists like movie music to help us connect to a place, a location, maybe a circumstance. So m music that's ambient is there to set the scene for the experience, right? The, the total package of the experience. Whereas melody in a lot of ways is, is really about us. It's about players. It's about connecting us to the occurrence on the screen in a way that we will resonate with it. And, and melody is this really interesting thing to me because I think, I don't know who decided in the classical time period that melody was the thing that mattered, but it, I mean, it goes all the way back to Bach and it's been done by every composer since Schubert. I mean, if you listen to one of the most popular and over overperformed pieces of music uh Debussy's Claire de Lune that's now that has impressionistic stylings into it which we can get into in a separate video but the point is is that that's melody and melody is the thing that it doesn't matter where we are in time melody thrusts us back into a moment I think of, uh, obviously I've been playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and we're talking about the father of Final Fantasy music. So like, you know, Aerith's theme. For so many of us that grew up with Aerith's theme in Final Fantasy VII, we know exactly where we were when we experienced that for the first time. I remember the first time I heard One Winged Angel and where I was and why One Winged Angel is so incredibly popular. It's not just because it represents Sephiroth's final form, blah, 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 blah. We're talking about something here that is so so much deeper than than just it's it's a fascinating thing 
melody is so powerful and earworms and and we, we used to have opera rehearsal and after a while you just hear this stuff over and over again and it ingrains itself into you but i can't remember i think the last movie soundtrack that has really stuck with me was interstellar but even that's a melody and now it's a little bit repetitive actually but that does such a great job of showcasing the depth of of melodic patterns and from a video game perspective there are so many tracks like like let me see if i hum this to you are you gonna know it if you guess mega man 2 yeah you're right And it's so interesting because even in nine seconds, you know exactly what's going on here. And it really like penetrates our spirits and it makes us want to pay attention more. Right, okay, fine. Let me let me ask you this. Uh, do you remember this? Right. And so I, I think the point uh, by listening to Mitsuda here, the, the point that I think Uematsu is trying to make is that we are able to evolve uh, in music and not get stuck in this sort of orchestral ambiance thing that is so prevalent right now in video games for the most part there's obviously exceptions we can move past that and actually continue to evolve the medium of music itself and it's one of the reasons why every time i have a guest on this channel they're always like wow especially if you watch the ryan mckinney episode he's like wow there is so much stuff going on here that surpasses like just the box of classical music or just the box of movie soundtrack right like it, it it it's diversifying it's changing things it's it's evolving um there is so much melody that ingrains itself into us and it, it allows us to uh, to evolve and as listeners we we just get excited about melody and i find it interesting too that like when we look at something like warhammer dark tide soundtrack right we have church organ mixed with this electronica soundtrack it's evolving itself like listen So, so that's that's unique. That's the thing that it, it, that's the flexibility that Uematsu talks about. Where we have flexibility, uh, games give us the flexibility and the capacity to innovate. And using like traditional Gregorian chant mixed with organ, mixed with this dark, grungy sound quality, is really effective. And I think. I think that that's a really exciting thing that we need to kind of pay attention to that that melody and these melodies that that I think Uematsu is talking about are first of all I think that that's what he knows right like he knows melody and he understands how important melody is and I don't necessarily think that movie music isn't I don't think it's bad but I don't think that it necessarily does more than showcasing an ambiance and I think for a lot of us and a lot of people in general, I think ambiance can only get you so far. I think we all enjoy when a melody sticks out. And I think most people would say that music is at its best when there is something that latches on to us and latches on to itself. I'm sure someone has done some deep study about how melody perpetuates emotion. And I think that that's basically what Uematsu is saying here is that it's like movie soundtracks can only get you so f far. Movie soundtrack like music and games can be sort of uninteresting because what does it really do? And if you think about the games that have come out in the last three, four, five years, which of those games have melodies that you attach yourself to? I know right off the top of my head, the answer is Elden Ring as a prime example, or Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, but that of course was, you know, Narita and, and or Octopath Traveler 2. It's in that old style of leaning on melody and allowing melody to showcase 
the emotion. And I think it's really cool because Melody, I think, also allows for the player to be the main character in a lot of ways. Or if we hear a theme about somebody or character themes like in League of Legends music, we automatically can latch ourselves onto what a character's all about. Whereas if we just hear like ambiance, it doesn't necessarily do anything. And I think it works really well in horror games and stuff, but it doesn't necessarily showcase anything beyond the temporary sensation right once you are done with that game that melody goes by that that music goes by the wayside and you're kind of left with um you know you, you forget about it because it was part of the experience you may have felt some sort of way about it but it doesn't latch itself onto you and make you feel like an active participant in it and i think that that's where video games have this beauty and that's where video games should really be able to to really flourish. Video games have always been at the cutting edge of technology and always moving technology forward. And I think that musically as well, one of the reasons why I get so frustrated with people that don't necessarily appreciate, listen to, or understand video game music is that video game music is evolving the genre in such a way that it's actually ahead of its time forever it's always changing the game and i think while there's nothing wrong with classical music or any style of music and we can have all of these different things in one beautiful musical package i do think that the classical music industry is even though there is evolution and there are composers trying to write new music the inherent process around the classical music industry is based around the old classics which are all very much melodically focused but they're not evolving per se when you look at wh where the freshest and most innovative music is coming from nine times out of ten it's actually in the video game sphere and i think it's a really interesting uh, conversation to be having melody is really important and i think that's why we can't really allow ourselves to sleep on melody melody latches itself onto us and it's why nostalgia triggers it's why we feel certain things more intensely it's why video game music moves us and uh and that's a really fun thing to think about and something that's really important to latch on to. So what do you think about all of this? I'm really curious to know what your perspective is on Melody. Talk to you later.